Hello folks, it's the Pace Chaser again. Welcome to another one of my model reviews where we look at some of the older models that are available on the second hand market. And this one we've got two Mercedes minibuses to review. If this was a TV talent show we'd probably call it a Mercedes off but it's not a TV talent show so we won't. But I've got the EFE exclusive first editions Mercedes 709 with Reeve Burgess or Plaxton Beaver bodywork. And I've got the Corgi original omnibus company OOC Mercedes 814 Vario with Plaxton Beaver 2 bodywork to review. I've also got some toy minibuses to look at at the end which I'll come to later on. So let's start with the EFE model. This one is catalogue number 24807 in East Yorkshire's Scarborough Skipper livery released in July 1999 and this one represents vehicle 441 registration F441GAT. The uh, Beaver was introduced by Reeve Burgess in around 1987. Reeve Burgess was a subsidiary of Plaxton. Um, in the early 90s Plaxton found that the main factory at Scarborough didn't have enough work so they closed the Reeve Burgess factory at Pilsley near Chesterfield and moved production of the Beaver up to Scarborough and it was rebranded the Plaxton Beaver. In the mid 90s Mercedes replaced the chassis range that included the 709 with the Vario range and Plaxton updated the bus body to uh, suit the new chassis and it became the Beaver 2. Both of these are still relevant um, nowadays, you still find a few of them in service with operators, they're not in normal um, passenger service anymore because of the disability access regulations, however you can find them in use as coaches and private hire vehicles. Um, there's a couple of firms locally to me that still run the uh, Varios um, in a coach capacity, you can find them on rail replacements sometimes and things like that and also as on um, private hire. And I think there's still the odd firm that has a 709. So if you've got a, fi a fictional fleet, you could uh, certainly pick one of these up on the second hand market and paint it up. And still um, in 2024, as I do this, March 2024, you can still find a handful of these in service in fleets up and down the country. Well, as I say, we're going to start with the EFE model. So we've got uh, we're laid there a little bit. So this one represents an East Yorkshire vehicle, as I said, um, East Yorkshire took over the Scarborough and Pickering depots of United Automobile Services in 1986 and set them up as the Scarborough and District subsidiary. The minibuses carried the East Yorkshire Little Bus Silver with uh, blue and red stripes, but with Scarborough Skipper fleet names rather than the East Yorkshire Little Bus ones found at the uh, other East Yorkshire depots. So this is in the Scarborough Skipper livery um, as a Scarborough allocated vehicle. So we'll start off with the front, as I always say in these reviews, the most important aspect of a model because most of them, whether they're in a display case or on a diorama or a layout, tend to be displayed with the front facing outwards. And the front on this one is generally pretty good. The only uh, fly in the ointment really, you could say, is the um, destination blind area. There's uh, no relief on the front of it. There should be um, sort of relief lines around the sides and along the top and bottom. And there isn't. It's just flat printed. Um, there's no, as I say, relief around the destination. And that does uh, spoil the look slightly. Makes it look a little bit too flat. Apart from that, the front's really good. The windscreen's the right shape and size. The bonnet, which is um, at first glance quite simple, but in actual fact is anything but. All sorts of uh, weird angles and curves and things. Nicely modelled. The grille is really well done on this EFE model as well. It's uh, it's not too heavy, it's not too light. The detailing is uh, just about right on it. You've got the Mercedes three-pointed star in pride of place there. If we come down to just below the uh, main grille, you can see as well the slightly awkward shape of the rail thing has been replicated. And the front bumper, complete with its air intakes at the bottom there, um, is modelled quite nicely as well. If we go around towards the side, you've got the squared off wheel arch at the front there, not quite rounded, and the rather flimsy looking bumper um, of the real thing, again nicely modelled. Got the more rounded uh, rear wheel arch as well, a slightly awkward shape of the bottom of the sides as well. The wheels are nicely done, nice representation of the real thing. The uh, window pillars on the EFE model are part of the main casting. The uh, windows themselves are plastic inserts that give a flush glazed effect and look really, really good. But yeah, all nicely done. Go around the back again, lovely. The shape of it's uh, correct. There's a few chips on this one, as you can see. 
it's what I bought second hand um, surprisingly but yeah you've got uh, the light clusters there nicely done again bumper looks good as I say the window the shape and size of it is about right go around to the offside what looks like a, a tab to look at the window is actually a representation of the emergency exit handle it, it doesn't quite look as effective as it could do um, a touch of silver paint on that would make it look a lot better to be fair look at the roof um, deceptively simple but you've got a little vent there on top of the destination box destination box itself is nicely shaped and you've got the representation of the marker lights uh, fore and aft as well which is uh, good to see if we turn it over got hopper bus stamped on the chassis but you've got a representation of the chassis itself the exhaust system so yeah a rather nice model all in all so just slightly let down by the flatness of the destination blind a little bit of relief around the edges of it would make it look a lot better but i suppose there's only so much you can do in a, in a casting we'll have a look at the uh, corgi oc one then we'll have a look at the actual decor of them as well um so again we start at the front of the oc one the uh, upper front's pretty good the shape of the uh, destination blind area is uh, represented well the windscreen is as well it should have uh, windscreen wipers fitted but this one has lost them at some point along with the offside mirror again it's one that i picked up second hand for a cheap price uh, because of the damage on it the missing wipers and the missing mirror go down to the grill it's a bit of a letdown on this uh, model the corgi oc vario it's a little bit heavy in its casting. It's uh, It looks more like something off one of Corgi's toys, to be honest. It's uh, not quite got the finesse, certainly of the AFE model, um, or the, you know the finesse that it should have, really. And it also doesn't have the uh, three-pointed star badge uh, put onto it, which you know all these buses would have had when they were new. Some of them lost them during the service life. Some of them had them overpainted in the same colour as the grill. But uh, they all had them when they were new. And... It, the fact that it's missing does make the grill look uh, quite plain. You could put one on. Um, Sunrise Transfers do a transfer of the uh, Mercedes three-pointed star badge. But if you put a water slide transfer on, it will just sink into the uh, ridges of the grill. What you'd have to do is put um, a suitably sized piece of plastic painted black um, onto the grill. Glue that on and then put the transfer onto that. So yeah, the grill does let the uh, front down slightly. Otherwise than that, it's pretty decent. The... Uh, Bonnet shape is about right. The bumper's nicely done. Again, you've got the representation of the air intakes on the bumper there. Move around to the side. The uh, front wheel on the Corgi one looks a bit strange. It's uh, a little bit too flat. The, um, in the hub should stick out a little bit more than it does. And again, it does detract, along with that heavy grille, from the uh, frontal appearance of it. Uh, the door's part printed onto the, uh, gla the plastic glazing. You can't really tell on this one because it's uh, modelled in uh, different colours. The door itself is white, but you've got the representation of the rubber seals around it in black, which give it a bit of relief, and it makes it look a little bit better than the flat printed one. The door actually should be all black on this uh, vehicle, but you know that's a, a minor technical point. The uh, glazing bars on this one, on the Corgi model, are printed onto the actual glazing unit. That makes it look quite good. The uh, actual Vario, the Plaxton Beaver 2, was uh, quite heavily flush glazed. So if you'd done it as part of the casting, it would have looked uh, a bit strange. It looks about right uh, like this. And again, the slightly awkward shape of the bottom of the sides is nicely replicated. Go around to the back. Again, the shape's good. The uh, size of the back window and the shape of it is just about right. Light clusters look pretty reasonable. Maybe do with a slight bit of repainting, it looks slightly heavily painted, but uh, yeah, they're not too bad at all. And the rear bumper nicely represented. You have got the seam line there between the two parts of the casting, but that's got to go somewhere. The uh, roof comes off on this when you take it apart. Go around to the offside again, quite nicely done. Um, this one has got chip paint because again, it's one that I bought cheap, but uh, yeah, I mean, normally that wouldn't be on it. The roof on the uh, Vario are quite plain, but it does have the uh, upslope at the front towards the destination area. It's very subtly done. It's not the uh, angled tr transition of the earlier Beaver body. But yeah, it is subtly modelled and it is actually present rather than just doing a flat roof as some diecast manufacturers would have done. And if we flip it over again, you've got a representation of the chassis detailing on the underside there. So all in all, not a bad model, not quite as good as the uh, EFE one. 
Uh, what this one does have that the AFM one doesn't is the mirrors, or it should have anyway. But as you can see, they are quite vulnerable to damage. The offside one, as I say, is broken off. And the near side one is at quite a jaunty angle. Um, I didn't catch that too much. In series of them, um, EFE one modelled in one colour, uh, which in the case of this one is red, strangely enough. The uh, interiors of the real vehicles with grey, so a grey interior would have been far better. Um, they had grey floors, dark grey carpet on the seat backs and the sides, um, the, the interior sides from the period when carpet went off everything apart from the floor on buses. They also had a grey based um, seat maquette with uh, coloured chevrons on it so grey would have been a better bet you could take the bus apart and repaint the interior but this one is from my display cabinet so i'm not going to bother doing that the oc one has got um, most of the interior done in one color which in the case of this one is grey which is correct but it does have contrasting color on the uh, handrails as you can see which are on a slightly strange um, sub assembly that's on the inside it does look quite effective though looking through the windows this one has got the pink grab poles that the uh, real bus would have had. So yeah, it does look uh, quite good. It is a slightly odd thing, but if you take one apart to look at it, it does look a slightly strange um, structure, this kind of handrail thing. But as I say, looking in through the windows at normal viewing, it does look effective. Um, it does colour the floor a different colour as well. I don't, don't think the floor should be pink on this one, but again, it's a minor point. So I said I've got a quick look at the deco. We'll have a look at the EFE one. The Scarborough Skipper name is nicely done. The livery, as you can see, was silver with blue and red stripes. The blue and red were slightly strange shades in real life and they've been replicated quite well on this model. And you've got the uh, East Yorkshire legal letter in there, 252 Anderby Road Hull. Familiar to uh, many enthusiasts. So yeah, nicely done. Scarborough district name on the back rather than Scarborough Skipper, that's correct as well. So yeah, lovely. And it's on Scarborough Town Route number two, which uh, would have seen the type in real life. The Corgi one is uh, the Western Greyhound one that I've got. So catalogue number OM43403 slash 2. There were two versions of it. The slash 1 had the destination New Key on Route 556. And slash 2, as you can see, has the destination Heligan Gardens on Route 526. Slightly annoying. Um, it's one of these things where Corgi split the production. Um, a thousand were done with one destination, a thousand were the other. It's a bit annoying they didn't actually change the registration number of the bus while they were doing it as well because um, both lots, regardless of destination, had the same registration, S501 SRL. There were three buses in this batch, um, S501, 502 and 503 SRL. So it would have been far better for collectors really if they'd changed the registration at the same time. But they didn't, as I say, they're all S501 SRL. But the livery is well done. The uh, slightly strange shade of green that uh, Western Greyhound use is replicated nicely. Transfers are done nicely as well with the uh, Greyhound logo. As I say, the doors should actually be black on this bus rather than um, picked out in the sort of white colour. But it's a minor detail. But yeah, legal lettering nicely done as well. Go around the back, they've printed the uh, Western Ground name onto the window as it should be is really good to see and yeah the finishing generally is pretty good as i say it shouldn't have the chips but it's one that i bought cheap so we get on to pricing the two more models that have suffered from the closure of hattons hattons used to sell things at a more realistic price than a lot of other dealers seem to do um from hattons you could pick up a efe mercedes for as little as six pounds and a corgi one for about eight but those days have gone unfortunately as i say i'm doing this in march 2024 Hattons has closed down and we are now relying on other dealers and on internet auction sites. So a quick look at eBay earlier on today showed that the cheapest EFE model for sale was £8.50 um, with postage on top and the most expensive was £37.80 that was for the Arriva corporate liveried one. Um, certain liveries, particularly the big groups like Arriva, First etc tend to command higher prices. Uh, the second most expensive I could find was £24.99. Um, including postage and that was a Metrobus of Orpington one so uh, yeah the East Yorkshire one tends to sit towards the higher end most of them I mean as I said the cheapest was 850 most are somewhere around the 13 to 16 pound mark and the East Yorkshire one does tend to sit somewhere between 16 and 20 pounds they are slightly more collectible East Yorkshire are popular with uh, collectors and enthusiasts and uh, rightly so you know nice fleet um, 
lovely liveries no matter what area you're looking at and a nice variety of vehicles as well but yeah anywhere between £8.50 and £37.80 as I say most models are somewhere around the £13-£15 mark um, postage included in a lot of them some of them postage outside as for the uh, Corgi one the cheapest one I could find on eBay today was £16.90 uh, and the most expensive was £33 that was a Western Greyhound one the Western Ground one is slightly strange. Uh, sometimes you will go on to internet auction sites and there will be none available at all. Other times you'll go on and people will be selling them for £65 and £70 each, which is frankly ridiculous for a bus of that size. And then you'll go on again a little bit later on, a couple of weeks later, and people will have them on for £15, £20. So there are two available on um, eBay at the moment. One, as I say, is £33, um, I think including postage on that one. And the other one was £22 with postage on top, so about 27 all in. So that's what you're looking at. The Western Ground one is slightly more collectible than a lot of the models. But as I said, the cheapest Vario I could find uh, for sale today was £16.90, and that included postage. So that's your sort of starting point now. Now, I did mention I was going to look at a toy minibus as well while we're here looking at Mercedes minibuses. And it is this one, the Corgi Juniors uh, school bus based seemingly on a Mercedes 608 from the 1980s. It's not quite to form a meter of scale, but it's not that far off, as you can see, if I stand it alongside the 709. The 608 in real life was smaller than the 709, so it's not far off at all. Now, it looks quite basic. Some of them have got um, black glazing units that you can't see through. Some of them have got this uh, tinted yellow version. But as you can see, the uh, grill is actually quite nicely done. Mercedes three-pointed star on there, the headlights modelled as well. And we just swing it round. It is a toy. There's no getting away from that. Look at the roof, you've got the skylight modelled on there. To take it apart, what you need to do is to drill where that rivet is and just drill that out basically. And then the chassis clips out the front headlights and grill are part of the chassis unit. So they sort of go into there. And there's a clip on the back so if you remove that rivet the chassis will come out now the reason i show this these at the minute um i'm gonna have a look on ebay the cheapest one i could find was four pound plus postage um the sum about a fiver including postage actually the, the postage on the four pound one wasn't that much but yeah about a fiver uh, with postage included in that and they do convert quite nicely into things that look a little bit like buses um here's a lead city transport mercedes 406 that i've done the destination blind in real life was just kind of stuck on as an afterthought like that so it's a bit of plastic stuck on as you can see i've filled in the uh, ridges on the roof with a bit of filler just to smooth the roof off cut out put a door in um, cut the window pillars out to make a bigger window there and it does make you know it's not 100 percent realistic but it's a nice little model i've also got one that i've converted to open top to kind of represent the east yorkshire one that they did convert to open top the 608 and again, I've put a door in. It's not brilliant, but they're just a little bit of fun. Something a bit cheaper than the actual die-cast models. And you can just have a bit of a blowout on them, you know, a bit, a bit of fun in the workshop. And where's the harm in that? So I just thought I'd show you those just at the end. And we'll line them all up just for the end shot. And there we go. So as always, thank you for joining me. Please take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.